Dear friends, I want to ask your forgiveness today. We're pausing on what we normally do on Wednesday weekly, and please forgive me for some of my ramblings. I'd already written today's update, and it was about some of the great highlights from this past week at Northwest Christian Church. I'll try to share those maybe next week. But it's not a good day. Another horrific tragedy took place yesterday in Uvalde, Texas. So far, 19 precious children and two teachers are dead. Last night, parents in the small town did not get to tuck their beloved children into bed. Everywhere else, parents were holding on to their kids just a little bit longer, trying to explain to their kids the unexplainable. Teachers everywhere today are going to be asked some heart-wrenching questions. Our, our students and our children pastors are going to be dealing with some heavy emotions. Hal Harrell, he's the Uvalde School Superintendent, he said this yesterday, we're a small community and we're going to need your prayers to get through this. And he's so right. So I'm asking, would you take some time and intentionally pray today for those families? The other thing that has me struggling today is how we are continually being bombarded with so much discouraging news. It just doesn't seem to let up. I mean, Russia invaded Ukraine. Many reports and captioned referencing the Third World War. And so many innocent lives have already been lost. More evangelical leaders are falling morally or doctrinally. So many people, including Christians, viciously attack each other on social media. And there's the lingering effects of the pandemic, bickering communities, bickering nation, natural disasters, inflation, fear of the future. And then at any of your own personal issues, a prodigal child, a marriage struggling, nagging health issue. And there are many Christian families and churches that are simply struggling. And the apparent triumph of evil has left so many of us discouraged. I mean, we see, we feel all of the heartache from the wars, the senseless killings, the dissension, tornadoes, the diseases, poverty. Do, do you sometimes pray, God, this seems like a great time for you to bring us all home. I mean, is anybody else thinking, Lord, I'm ready for that day when you should wipe away all tears from our eyes and there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death. It's getting worse, not better. That's not being pessimistic, that's facing facts. Paul to Timothy says in chapter three of 2 Timothy, he predicts that evildoers and the imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. So is anyone else just feeling drained? I mean, we see so many challenging things happening. It's, it's hard as Paul says to keep our spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Uh, yes, there are moments when my spiritual fervor it seemed to wane. And so what I do, I need to gain respect, perspective. My friends, we live in a fallen world. And this means that we all will always be in perpetual crisis, at least until Christ comes again. And please hear this, politicians, they cannot bring us together. Educators, scientists, sports heroes, Hollywood entertainers, they're not gonna unite us. I believe only Jesus can bring us together. In John 12, he promises, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to me. Only Jesus can forgive our sin. He's the only one who can grant us hope for eternity. Only Jesus can break down the walls that separate us. Only Jesus can unite us. Now we have a part, we must humble ourselves. We gotta swallow our pride. We gotta surrender totally to the authority of Jesus. And with all that's going on, is anyone else reminded about our vulnerability our insufficiency. Again, Jesus reminds us, apart from me, you can do nothing. So yes, I know it's been overwhelming right now. But my friends, this is not the time for us to fret or just wring our hands in desperation and just live in fear. And neither is this the time for casual Christianity. Instead, this is a time for followers of Jesus to repent of sin, to cleanse our hearts, to trust God, to keep our eyes on Jesus. And as servants, as co-laborers for Jesus Christ, let's redouble our prayers, our efforts, our plans in sharing the good news and lifting Jesus high. This church, NCC, and our ministries this summer with youth and children and families, again, it's more important than ever before. But hear this, there is hope. It's time to say again with the Apostle Paul in Galatians 6, let us not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if, 
if we don't give up or quit. I hope that you'll be encouraged today. Make sure you're praying today. I'm looking forward to seeing you this weekend.